Okay, ladies and gentlemen, when we are solving um, our inequalities, you guys can see I have something very similar to a uh, multi-step equation, but this is a multi-step inequality. Now, the one thing I want to make sure that we are all aware of is if you are having trouble with the inequality symbol, please just forget about it and put an equation in there and then solve it just like you know how to do equations. It's the exact same thing except for one little step will change at the end. But um, we are using with the inequalities, which our solution is going to be different, Brandon. So we are going to want to make sure that uh, we understand what that inequality symbol means, which I'll go over once we get through it. But until then, we got to solve these just like we do in equations. The first thing to do is always simplify the left and the right side. So we see that we have parentheses. So to simplify this, we're going to want to apply distributive property. And therefore, we have. 2x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 10x minus 20. OK? Now, the next thing is, if you guys remember, um, when we were doing inequalities, I always it doesn't matter if you want to solve for x on the right or the left side. But I always told you to solve for x where it's going to be positive. And I'll talk about that more next class period. Or not next class period, but next example. So rather than subtracting the 10x, which is perfectly fine, I would prefer to subtract the 2x on both sides. So therefore, I get negative 4 is greater than or equal to 8x minus 20. All right. Now the next thing we need to do is just simply apply our operations. Now I have simplified this down uh, to a two-step equation. So I can just add the 20 over here. Add the 20. I get 16 is greater than or equal to 8x. Divide by 8, divide by 8. 2 is greater than or equal to x. Okay? Now, I always, it always is helpful, though, to have the x on the left side. But one thing we can do when graphing these is go ahead and use a test point. Um, I would be very careful with people that say, oh, just always graph where the, air, where the inequality symbol is pointing. Because that is not always the case, Quijan. For example, this is an example where that does not work. We are not going to shade to the right. The reason being is the variable is on the right-hand side. So you got to be, that rule only, only works when you have variable on the left side. So let's see why I am not shading to the right. First thing I do is when I'm creating my table, I always start at my solution point, which is 2. So to the right will be my larger numbers. And then to the left will be my smaller numbers. OK, so I have greater than or equal to. For those of you that were here last class period, is that a part of our solution, which means it would be shaded, closed? Or is that not a part of my solution, which means it would be open? Closed. It's shaded in. We could always do a test point for that as well, but I'll try to save you some time. Now, to determine shading, the easiest and foolproof method, yes? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, what I'm saying, like, the other way. It should be x is less than you probably didn't flip the sign okay. when you divide it by a negative number, right? Yeah. That's why that's why I always say to get positive because we always forget flipping the sign. But if you remember it, it's not a problem to do it that way. So what I like to do is always just say, always just plug, pick a point to the left and to the right. So let's pick three and four. Now, simply just plug those numbers in for x. 2 is greater than or equal to negative 1. 2 is greater than or equal to 4. Is 2 greater than or, greater than or equal to negative 1? Yes. Yeah, that's true. Is 4, oh, I'm sorry, is 2 greater than or equal to 4? No, oh, false. So that's why I'm going to shade towards where it's true away from where it's false. And all of these points are a part of my solution. So all points to the left. Why is it filled in? Because 